Alright, we can't just keep playing one game. We gotta find a second game to finish. See anything on your side? I don't know. None of these games are really catching my attention. I think I've pretty much played most of... What? Were you listening to me? Yeah. What did I just say? You were saying that we need to stop this guerrilla warfare and keep it fair and to change our rage into smarter, greater... Are you just singing the theme song to Persona 4? I am just singing the theme song to Persona 4, yes. Oh, Fuka, I missed you. <laughs> oh, Fuka. Oh, yeah. God, this takes me back so much. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Gamers End. I gotta turn that down. You can probably hear that in this. What? I can't hear you over the really loud music. <laughs> My TV is low, too. God damn, this is loud. Yeah, okay, I welcome to Persona 4 Arena Ultimax, the climax to the Persona fighting game franchise. I am a massive Persona fan. If you watch my other channel, then you know that what a big fan I am. Because, I mean, that's my most popular video is the Persona video right now. Like, do, you just, like, wanna, do you just want to mute it? Fuck no, I'm not muting this. It's <laughs> dope-ass anime music. Well, isn't it? Is it There's my boy, Kuma! All right, Mitsuru Akihiko, my man. Mm. All right. Uh, how much do you know about the Persona games? Um, not much. But... Okay, here's the quick summation for anybody who doesn't know. In Persona 3, there was a 13th, there was a 25th hour of the day. It happened at midnight. Only people who could summon Personas could see it. Everybody else was, like, frozen in time. And, like, shadows would come out, which were, like, repressed memories and repressed emotions made form. And they would eat up the people who were just, like, being held hostage at that time, the people who were frozen. So the people with Personas had to fight them. And then, years later, Persona 4 came out, and that was something where there was a world inside the TV, and if people got shoved into the TV, then their shadows, you know, once again, their repressed emotions and stuff would come out, and they would attack you, and it was up to Persona users to go in there, and they would have to fight uh, these shadows and persona users were people who had in that game were people who had faced their shadows their repressed emotions and accepted them and turned the shadows from enemies into allies and in the first persona 4 fighting game it what it was is that in oh they're gonna play it again all right uh but in the um oh is this a different one but anyway okay in the first Persona fighting game, the uh, Persona 3 characters, they had a robot. Like, one of the members of Persona 3 was this wealthy uh, industrialist, and her company built robots that fought Persona, that fought Shadows. And one of them ended up getting kidnapped and thrown into the TV, so her shadow came out. So basically, it was the Persona 4 characters who were like, oh, I know what happens when you see people inside the TV, so they went to go and rescue her. And then the Persona 3 characters, they went to go and rescue her. But inside this TV world that got created, it turned into a fighting game where they had to face each other. But at the end of it, they went, oh, we don't know who actually threw her inside. Hmm, interesting. Well, you Persona 4 characters, you go out. Don't worry about that. That's our issue. And the Persona 4 characters were like, mm, this is the TV. This is our issue. So this is the climax. This is where they find out who started it all. And that was the craziest ass run on sins I've ever said. But yeah, I've been looking forward to this game so much. Uh, I waited for the price to drop a little bit, but this one even came with an inflatable teddy. It's awesome. Like, it's Teddy is the big bear guy. That guy, right there. <laughs> hey, Teddy! Uh, but he comes with a little inflatable teddy, and it's like one of those bopper things where you punch it and it falls <laughs> back and forth. Yeah. Alright, and that is the robot girl who got thrown in last time, and that's you, and that's the guy who was the protagonist That's support. me? That's Get you. it? You? Actually, me, it, me. actually it was you, because uh, that was, in the Persona games, you get to fully create yourself. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, there is no really, is there, is there really a continuity between Persona th the Persona games, or is it they're kind of their own Shockingly, thing? yes, there is a continuity. Like, they, like, oh, if you mean, like, 
okay, there's no continuity in that if you play one, you have to play the next one. Yeah. Yeah, there's none of that. However, it is set in the same world. Like, they do, like, make references to each other, uh, but they're, like, brief references, like, little wink and nods. But this is the first time in which the characters actually, like, interacted. Mm. Uh, But, yeah, it is totally, like, its own world. Uh, Okay, (laughs) but every single game you can play and just start and you're fine. Okay. Goddamn, stop... What do I have to... Do I actually have to... Wow, a fighting game where I actually have to press the start button. I can't just hit X. <laughs> wow. Because, yeah, let's be honest. Nobody fucking presses the start button. Everybody just presses X. Okay. Either X or A or whatever. Okay. Episode? Whatever's the main button. Hey, I just got an achievement for starting the game. Uh, <laughs> for going through all that, that makes sense. Okay, there's my screen. All right, story mode. Uh, battle. What do you think? Should I go with the story? Because the story is long. The story in these things are long as shit. Mm. Well, you pretty much already explained the story. Well, yeah, but... (laughs) I'm going to start the story. Episode P4. Interesting. I wonder what that means. Episode Persona 4? Well, yeah, but... Oh, Snap is like a little tree. Okay, now the music's off. I can turn this up a little bit. And then the music will start playing in like, blast... (laughs) Rest God, the Persona games have such great music. This is my favorite <laughs> franchise of all time. I gotta be honest. And I haven't even played the first two. Like, I know people are gonna be like, oh, you're not a real Persona fan because you just jumped in after they got famous. I don't give a shit, okay? That doesn't change that they're my favorites. Alright, what does that say? Too far away for me to read. Uh, what does what say? There's a the lot screen. of... Uh, new... New chapter one, a mysterious guest. Alright. My eyes are currently kind of Yeah, but there's, here. like, words scattered all over, so I'm like... W- oh, wish- I gotta, like, move the cursor over it. God, this is... Alright, this is already getting weird, but... Okay. This entire episode has just been me talking about this game. There's been no actual game. Margaret. Is that correct? Oh, dot, dot, dot. Mystery person. Yeah, Margaret is one of the people who runs the Velvet Room. Very well. In that case, there is nothing more to be said. Oh, they changed Igor's voice! No! (laughs) Uh, I'm sorry if I'm geeking out too much, but... (laughs) Everyone at home is like, who's Igor and Margaret? Igor had such a great voice. (laughs) Welcome to the Velvet Room. God, that guy's voice is great. Maybe this guy will grow on me. All right. Then again, I can't blame... This ordinarily only accessible to those bound by a contract. Yeah, this guy's not so bad. (laughs) I got I I hate those people who are like they changed a the voice. This is unacceptable. It's like this. It's gonna take time to get used to it. Just be okay with it. You are fated to refine your power. You will most definitely require our assistance, eventually. Okay, so Igor and Margaret are two of the people who run the Velvet Room. The Velvet Room is where the protagonists from the Persona series go, and it's like a mystical realm that only chosen people can access and the people who access it are people who are bound by a contract and when they go in there that's where you like fuse new personas together it's where you like manage different things so yeah basically it's where you get your personas but until we meet again farewell yes who knows who that person is this is the velvet room well the velvet room persona 4 they're different in every game Mm -hmm. that's igor bask in it (laughs) are you certain about this our domain is indivisible from the destiny of Oh, their, their lips actually move. That's weird. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, <laughs> they usually don't do that in the games. Margaret? Pardon. I spoke out of turn. Well, Margaret's lips, uh, yeah. I guess it's too much animation. Igor's mouth would be too big, yeah. Yeah, to worry about that nose animation, too. <laughs> it's flopping around. So, the young man Yu Narukami is tied to our recent guest's fate. I wonder what fate, or rather, encounter will await him. Yu Narukami. Now that's a guest who never ceases to amaze. <laughs> she got the odds for Yu Narukami. <laughs> yeah, this is, it's also like a school interaction. That's what makes the Persona game so great, is that... Every persona is divided into 22 different categories. And then when you're at school or at work or in your part-time, you'll meet people and they'll each inter- be related to those 22 groups as well. And you start talking to these people and the more you talk with them, the more like interactions with you get with them, the closer you get to them, the stronger those personas of that type will become. So it's really cool because you get like really invested in these people's stories. 
Yeah, Remember, it's important to make friends for your benefit. Yes. <laughs> Remember, friends lead to giant personas. Right in the corner. And once you max out your social link, you never have to talk to them again. True. <laughs> Ah, GA. That's just how it goes at Juness during Golden Week. And on Children's Day at that. If it wasn't this busy, we'd be out of business by now. Today's Children's Day? Huh? It's weird seeing you talk because <laughs> in the first in the previous games he has like no voice. You just select his dialogue and he will just like nod. And yeah, that's it. It's he's like Link in the Legend of Zelda game, sort of. <laughs> Kinda, except that the the well, whole, yeah. the, the silent protagonist trope. No, 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 I think back to that. Could they have picked a wider font to put against this white background? Well, maybe if they, like, there's, there's supposed to be, like, a, a, a darkened uh, streak across for the text to go through. There but is, but it's so light. I know, if they could have just made that darker, it would have been better. <laughs> yeah, I do have a problem with these, with the fine game versions of these, though, because the storylines are so long. Like, look at all this text! It's a fighting game. Yeah, like Persona's like an uh, like an RPG, right? So yeah. there's like a lot of plot heavy stuff. It is, yeah. But so like to try and have a plot heavy thing into a fighting game where there is no plot, you just kind of beat the crap out of each other. Is... Kanji, my man. <laughs> All these people are my man. I prefer to three different people as my man. What, no woman? <laughs> she is my woman. <laughs> that sounds creepy for an adult to say that. <laughs> She is, you, know, you should say, she is my girl. She is my girl. My gr yeah. <laughs> she is my girl. Everybody loves Chie. <laughs> the weirdest thing about Chie is that... Uh, That's pretty impressive, Kanji. Especially for you. The weirdest thing about uh, Chie is that when you watch it, it's very clear that like everybody was meant to be paired up with somebody. Mm. And like the Japanese designers are like, you get to date whoever you want in the game. But it's clear that the Japanese designers were like, yeah, everybody's going to want Yukiko. Everybody's going to want the prim and proper daughter of the heiress, Yukiko. And that's the one who everyone's going to pair. Like, anytime that you see, like, posters from Japan, it's those two characters together. The main character and Yukiko. In America, everyone loves Chie. <laughs> like, even game trailers, they did top ten Valentines. Like, top ten characters that they would want to date from video games. Chie was, like, number three. I was like, holy shit. Do you think that's, like, a cultural thing? Oh, it totally is. I think it totally is because, I mean, Chie loves action movies and eating steak. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, that's that's America. Change steak to cheeseburger. Yeah, that's the one that clearly the Japanese people want everybody to date. Right. All right, time for plot. You can go. Blah, 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 blah. And we might be... You guys also have to, have to forgive me because I really need to update my glasses prescriptions and my TV is far away from where we're seeing. <laughs> Do you, so I could just read it for you. <laughs> there's a table for four with... Six, Six chairs in. he found somewhere. Thank you. <laughs> I can't read this. After waiting for everyone to be seated, Yoshiki clears. I thought I said deers. Clears his throat. Yeah, see, it looks. Like <laughs> clears his throat as if to drive away all the noise. Uh, see, why do they have to fucking yeah. tell us that? That's what I hate about the story mode in this. Like, yeah, I've been speaking positively, but I hate the story mode in these because. They put in text like, Yosuke clears his throat to get everyone's attention. Like, just have him start talking. I, I guess they're like trying to have like, make it seem like it's like reading a story. It's supposed to be like a light novel is what yeah, they're going for. But they're it's... totally going for the light novel theme. <laughs> yeah, which once again is a big, is popular over in Japan, but I don't know if it's that gr over that big here in the, in the States. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the size of this crowd. I'd say I made the right call showing up like this. I'll admit I don't really like Teddy's new voice actor. The old <laughs> voice actor that played Teddy was great. This one is like... He gets Teddy inside the bear suit? Well, he gets Teddy outside the bear suit like this. Kind of creepy. Funny, considering people, it's like... Considering, like, people think Teddy outside the suit is fine, but Teddy inside the suit is creepy. <laughs> It's because you never learn. <laughs> well, let's get down to business. We didn't get to talk much yesterday, after all. I can't blame so many of the voice actors for not returning to this game, though. I not, Chie. See, <laughs> see why they have to Who gives a shit? <laughs> we gathered here yesterday after seeing Labrys. Labrys off, and there wasn't time to calm down and talk about what happened. 
In the end, we agreed to leave the details to tomorrow, which is now today. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> oh my god. Let's start the investigation team meeting anyway. Yeah. Though we This is probably gonna sum up the exact shit I just said. <laughs> it's just not the same without our full roster of pretty girls. Oh yeah. I didn't even notice Reese and Nato weren't there. <laughs> but now Chan couldn't be here either. Well, it's not like the other day, where we just lost contact. Risa. Mm -hmm. She seems really busy. She said she had work during the holidays, too. At least we got to talk to her yesterday. Yeah, Nato-kun's job is keeping her busy, too. I guess it's the same old for them. Nato-kun knew things about what happened that not even we did. Apparently she knew about Mitsuru-san and her friends from the start. This is not intriguing at all <laughs> anyone who hasn't played this game. <laughs> Thanks to her, though, we got some good information. Well, then. Let's get everyone up to speed on what happened. Yeah, I can't blame any of the voice actors for not returning because this is one of those games that blew up so much that, like, they've had to have these same voice actors come back and say the same things over and over and over again. And they were like, I'm just... <laughs> like, literally, there was Persona 4. Then there was Persona 4 Golden for the Vita, which was basically the same game except for with one new character. Uh, and then there was the Persona 4 anime. And then they made a Persona 4 Golden anime, which once again is exactly the same except with that new character ad in there. And then they made these fighting games, and then the sequel to the fighting game, and now they've made Persona Q, which is a game in which, for the DS, where time and space have opened up, and now the two teams from both games have met, but they met at, like, the time when they were playing. Like, like, like this game they meet, but, you know, the Persona 3 characters have aged by, like, five years, which I think is really cool. But, yeah, in Persona Q, they're the same age when they meet. Like, I'm just, like, imagining, like, the uh, voice actors, like, getting phone calls, like, hey, we need you to do another persona thing. I can't right now. I, especially, <laughs> like, but the one that shocks me for constantly returning is Troy Baker. <laughs> this dude, last year, he was in, he was uh, the main guy in Bioshock Infinite and the main guy in The Last of Us, which, like, he got awards for that. <laughs> like, he just blew up from that. And yet he's still coming back and being he's like, yeah, I'll be the angry young teenage guy. Yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs> I'll be in this weird Japanese game. I don't get it. Troy Baker's got to eat, y'all. TV world, yeah. The Midnight Channel is what they call the TV world that they can enter into. Uh, previously on Persona 4. Labyrinth uh, was the weapon. Uh, let's see. So she's a weapon for what? For fighting shadows. Fight. Oh, right. Yes. Uh, but she was an early model, so she still looks a lot like a robot, whereas the one that you played as in Persona 3 looked more like a human. Uh, she, uh... However... <laughs> now we're all caught. Okay. It, it only took us, like, what... 15 minutes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> mm -hmm. But that wasn't it. Their goal was to disrupt our hearts by making us fight each other and then steal our personas after they return to being shadows. Naoto said as much, too. I don't know. Turning them back to shadows and stealing them. That doesn't sound like something just anyone could pull off. Maybe not. See, that's true. That's Troy Baker, everybody. He's <laughs> using that method to try and gather powerful shadows. Oh, you're f the, This has been going so long, the timer on my phone is about to die. Like, my phone is about to die from being, from timing how long these episodes are. You know, I'm not going to time these episodes because it's going to be mostly dialogue. Uh, let me turn that off. Gathering shadows, huh? That's definitely not something any normal person would do. The atmosphere makes it. <laughs> Lean up to yesterday. Oh, he's gonna think oh, back. Oh, another flashback. Yes, the P1 Grand Prix was the fighting game. Because when you go into the TV world, when somebody gets shoved into the TV, their mind manipulates it, and their shadow takes over and turns into whatever they want. Like uh, there was a, the first person who got thrown into the TV, it was um, uh, this, it was Yukiko, and she had always wanted someone to come and rescue her from her fate of having to run this uh, hotel, because she didn't want to have to run the inn. She wanted to escape from that. So it turned the world into a giant castle, and like her shadow took the form of a princess, and you had to go up there and be the knight and save her from this fate. 
Uh, so when this fighting robot went in there, it turned the whole thing into a fighting tournament. And that's why the characters had to fight. I'll, I'll admit, it actually made sense for why these characters would fight. They did a good job at that. And the Harvey was Labrys. Digging this music. He's doing OBJECTION! Yeah, it totally looks like he's doing out OBJECTION. <laughs> Back to the shadows, suppression of yourself, which first of the dreams. Man, this literally is everything that I explained already. <laughs> Gee, it's almost like you didn't have to do any explaining at all. No, okay, I'm gonna get through this one, and then we're going to end this episode. But when we come back, it will be when I finally got to a point where we can fight, or at least when something is fucking happening. <laughs> we playing. apologize for all the uneventful events. <laughs> But we were met by members of a mysterious organization known as the Shadow Operatives. This is one of the cool, coolest parts of the last game, is that uh, it mentions that Mitsuru, who was from Persona 3, when she graduated from college, she went on to form the Shadow Operatives, which is a group of Persona users who fight down, who punt down other shadows, and showed this, like, shadowy version that you see right there of all the Shadow Operatives. And it's like, who are, like, that was the coolest part of it, because you got, as a Persona fan, you got to look at that and go, well, who are these people? One of them's carrying a baseball bat, so it's gotta be Junpei. But then everybody else, it was like, oh, I don't know these people. Are they brand new? And there's one person who had, like, a haircut from someone in Persona 1. <laughs> so I was like, god damn, they could be going with anybody in this. That's so cool. Yeah, the power of Personas. Oh, I can just skip this quick. Uh, oh, you just found out you could skip it? Yes. Shadows day in and day out. But the case isn't over yet. We couldn't find out. Oh, the culprit. I'm not seeing All right. things inside the TV. Another flashback. Oh, dear God. Okay. <laughs> no. Okay, yeah, we're going to end this episode now. When we come back on episode two, I apologize for how long this took without anything happening. I forgot that the stories were like this, but when we come back for episode two, things will be happening. All how right. about, like, instead of, like, making, like, the next episode, how about we make this, like, episode zero since, like, nothing really happened and it just established. I can <laughs> dig that. This was episode zero. This is a bold new direction for gamers in. Ooh. Ooh. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.